Today, we're gonna to match up two vastly different dog breeds, the Bernese Mountain Dog and the Pyrenees Mountain Dog to see what their differences and their similarities are. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bernie's Mountain Dog Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist, and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the Bernie's Mountain Dog, then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect Bernie's Mountain Dog companions. So if you're a lifelong Bernie's Mountain Dog lover, you love them as much as we do here at Fenrir, then I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future Bernie's Mountain Dog video. So then let's dive into today's video and compare these two breeds in this head-to-head -head video and we're going to start off with their origins. Now the Bernie's Mountain Dog is an old breed though it is impossible to put an actual date on when the breed was formed. We know that it was developed from dogs that came with Julius Caesar and his legions when the Roman Empire moved into the Swiss mountain range. The Berner, as it is commonly known, was developed along with four other greater Swiss mountain dogs, the Etel Butcher Mountain Dog, the Appenzeller Sennenhund, and the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog. All four of these breeds share a similarity in appearance and that striking tricolour coat. However, the Bernese Mountain Dog is the only one that poses long hair out of all four. Each breed also had similar purposes, being used as draft dogs to pull cart, droving cattle, and farm and family guardians. Now, the Pyrenees Mountain Dog, or Great Pyrenees, is an even older breed. France is where the breed was first standardized and refined, but the breed is much, much older. Experts believe the breed actually originated in Asia or Siberia and came along with immigrants who moved into Europe. There have also been fossils of the breed found back as far as 1800 to 1000 BC. But we do know that the breed was adopted as the Royal Dog of France sometime in the 17th century, and that is where eventually made its permanent home. Hey guys, very quickly, in case you didn't know, we have our perfect puppy program. It's the program that I designed myself as a canine behaviorist to help you guys become a high level canine leader yourself, and then how to be able to take your puppy from the second you bring it home, all the way through to that dream of the perfect canine companion that you've always wanted. So if you want more information on that, there'll be a link down in the description box below. Thousands of people have now gone through that process to extremely high levels of success. So there's some tests testimonials you can go and check out more information it's all in the description box below but let's get back into the video you were just watching now the Bernese mountain dog has a fascinating appearance with that long silky majestic coat of white underbelly black on top and brown markings around the gums and eyes they are a sturdy powerful dog with some incredible muscle underneath their luxurious coats their ears are triangular shaped and sit high on their head and they have that bushy tail which tends to sit lower in the position on the rear now males can grow all the way up to 27 and a half inches tall weighing around 150 pounds with females being a little bit smaller and the Bernese Mountain Dog only comes in one color which is that tri-color that they're famous for. Now the Pyrenees Mountain Dog is a showstopper. They are another fluffy dog though they are incredibly large and powerful. They appear regal or majestic and they have a large head and dark intelligent observant eyes. Male Pyrenees can stand up to 32 inches tall and weigh well over 100 pounds and again females tend to be a little bit smaller and again the Pyrenees always comes with a base coat of white however they can have some markings in different colours such as grey, tan, reddish brown and what we call badger. The Bernese Mountain Dog is a breed that was bred to work, therefore they have more energy than one might think they would for a breed their size. They were used to pull carts, move cattle and to guard. They are happiest when they can have a job that will drain them both physically and mentally, but if no job is available one will need to make time for long walks and play sessions to really burn off their dog's energy. If they are not afforded that physical outlet this breed will create its own way to expel that energy which usually takes the form of excessive barking and incredibly destructive behaviors in the home. This breed also requires a lot of grooming. They have a long coat which sheds frequently and a dense woolly undercoat, which they will blow twice a year when the seasons change. They need a proper brushing two to three times a week, and even if you stay on schedule with this grooming regime, you can still expect to find hair around the house and sticking to everything. 
Now, going over to the Pyrenees mountain dog, they are also a working dog, and no matter how much exercise you give them, they are still going to want to work, though not in the way you might think. This breed was used for guarding herds of livestock high up on the mountains. So while a pleasant work will save them from the zoomies in your home and around the house, they will be on the lookout for any threats at all time. If you have a fenced-in backyard, they will regularly patrol the perimeter to make sure there is nothing unwelcome or nothing out of sorts going on. Now, as for grooming, the Pyrenees has a ton of hair, but they only require weekly grooming to reduce that shedding. They do possess an undercoat and will blow their coats again when the seasons change, so be prepared to have a brush on hand at all times to reduce the amount of fur that is just blown all over your home. And this breed does possess a coat that is naturally dirt and tangle resistant, so you do not want to bathe this breed too much, and you never want to shave them as this can damage the natural properties of their coat and result in their fur matting. And when it mats, it seriously mats. So then let's take a look at their temperaments, and the Bernese Mountain Dog is an affectionate dog with high intelligence levels. It is also a fun-loving breed that wants to go with its people and get out and about and explore the world together. While extremely loving with its family, it can be somewhat aloof with strangers. Though they will come to their family's aid in a time of need, they prefer to rely on intimidation tactics to get the job done, so we're looking at much more of an effective watchdog than potentially a protection or guard dog. Now, the Great Pyrenees, in comparison, is a serious dog. They are calm, patient, smart, and tend to be one on the more mellow side. But if there is something to get serious about this dog, they will not waste any time getting that point across to anyone. And because they were bred to act independently, they will most likely not look to their owner for direction if they think that something needs to be handled. So that's the quick fire breakdown of some of the main differences and similarities between these two incredible mountain dogs. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you think there's something that we missed out that'd be really important, get involved down in the comment section below and get involved in this incredible community that we're building here at Fenrir. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell because we have got two videos like this coming to this channel every single week. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Bernie's Mountain Dog Show.